What is up guys, welcome to my review for Titan Season 2 Episode 12, very unusually titled Faux Hawk, because while the title is named after the Hawk storyline, obviously, the Faux Hawk part of it is barely any part of that actual storyline, and then that storyline itself does not take up most of this episode at all, so it's a very unusual title for this episode, I feel like there are a lot of other things they could have named it, but whatever, that obviously doesn't really affect my opinion of the episode whatsoever, so with that in mind, let's Let's talk about this episode. There are a, a couple different storylines with uh, Cadmus and with Hawk himself, with Corey and Rachel, with Rose and Jason, and also with Rose's backstory, and obviously with Dick. And I will go all over all of those storyline by storyline, but before that, there is like a couple scenes in the beginning of the episode that don't really connect to any specific storyline, but obviously uh, have to do with Deathstroke and Jericho. So the episode begins continuing from the flashbacks of the Jericho episode where after Jericho joins the Titans and Slade is fighting Robin or Deathstroke is fighting Robin, Jericho jumps in front of a sword and dies and we didn't see the aftermath of that in terms of Deathstroke himself. We didn't see Deathstroke's reaction to Jericho's death which is something that I think could have added a lot of emotion to that scene in the episode it came out in but in this episode we learn why they didn't show that because while he did react to it and it is very much emotional in the moment. The reason they didn't show this in the original episode is because right after that, like literally two seconds later, Jericho transfers his mind into Slade's and survives this while, while it seems like his body doesn't, his mind does within Slade. So that's why it didn't show the moment, but I still think they could have extended his death a little bit in that episode to show a little bit of Slade's reaction before we see Jericho transfer his mind because I think that could have added a lot of emotion to his death in that episode or at least his support. Pose of death. So then there's also a scene with Jericho and Slade talking in Slade's mind where Jericho is actually speaking which he can't do in real life because he is mute ever since that person who's trying to get back at Slade slit his throat open but this is the first time after him becoming Jericho or after him after that scene we see him using his voice but in this scene Jericho and Slade talk they were in they've been in this uh, in this world for like five years or at least Jericho's been in there Slade definitely has most of the control over his mind but Jericho is in there a little bit controlling him in some points but that's the beginning of this episode after that we see a bunch of different storylines with like i said cadmus hawk Corey and rachel rose and jason and then dick and i will go storyline by storyline but the cadmus storyline and the Corey rachel storyline they don't really have much of any substance other than you know other than setting up the next episode and for the Cadmus storyline, we see Gar continuing to attack random civilians as a tiger, which is, like I said, very different, like I said in a previous video, very different from what I expected Cadmus to do with Gar. I definitely thought that they probably would want to use him as a weapon, but also to unlock the rest of his animals, not just use him as a weapon and just as the tiger that he could already turn into, but with the next episode being the finale to wrap up this Cadmus storyline with Gar and Connor and the Deathstroke storyline, I definitely think that it's probably going to have to be a fairly long episode, like maybe an hour or maybe even longer than that, and if it is, I'm definitely excited for that, but uh, with the Gar storyline, I definitely expected it to be a little bit different from what it was, but there's also a scene of Dawn and Donna interrogating one of the Cadmus employees, which is a scene that I actually really like, and it's a lot of fun. In terms of the Corey and Rachel storyline, it's really short and there isn't really much substance. After the last episode, they went to get Dick and they, they he, if it turns out that he already escaped prison. They did learn that Jericho is alive, or at least Dick thinks that he's alive, and they never really mentioned that in this episode, because really all, all it's about is Corey struggling with her powers, which is obviously was set up in the last episode with her uh, on her first try not being able to blast down uh, uh, Dick's cell door, but it's also something we have seen before, like in season one, so it's weird to me that they're reiterating this, but uh, there is one part of this whole storyline that I do like. The argument between Rachel and Corey is fine, but the moment where Corey just breaks, it's a really good moment of acting from the actress, and that's really the only good part of this whole storyline, as the rest of it is, it's kind of pointless, and it doesn't really need to exist, and it definitely is, I think, my least favorite part of this episode, even though, you know, it's not bad. 
So then there's the Hawk storyline, which is, like, like I said, the episode is named after this, even though it definitely does not take up the most screen time, especially the faux Hawk part of the storyline with this other guy who uses the Hawk costume. But I guess the the title in this storyline is probably not referring to that guy, but it's referring to Hawk himself, who is no longer really Hawk. He, he's back on drugs, and he's not a superhero anymore, so he's a faux Hawk. Even still, this storyline as a whole is, is not anywhere close to the main focus of this episode. And I think the episode should have been named Ravager or something based off that storyline. But for the Hawk storyline, I think it's it's fine. I think the fight scene is really good. Like the fight scenes in the Fight Club is really good, especially with Hawk's costume looking as cool as it is. But other than that, the whole storyline was not exactly my favorite part of the episode. It was fine. It was good. It had some good moments. And that's really all, all I have to mention about this storyline because, you know, there isn't really much else. So then there's the Rose slash Jason storyline, which is mostly about Rose and her origin story. Her, uh, she's in this biking accident in a flashback where she's unhurt and then requests to meet her father, Slade. And after Slade turns her away, Slade does take her in and she becomes a Ravager. She gets this costume and has some training sessions, which is all really good. I think the fight scenes between them are really good. Her costume, other than the mask, is a great costume. Even though, I mean, the mask, I think, is really, really bad and cheap looking. I mean, it's not, it's not god awfully bad like it's not as bad as the flash's uh, mask in the season five of that show but it's definitely not good and it definitely needs an update already but i do like this origin story for the most part my one problem with this is the timeline doesn't really make sense because it, it seemed like slade met rose i mean it was confirmed that slade met rose three years ago which according to the timeline three years ago which is after jericho's death he already should have been in retirement or in hiding it seemed like jericho's death after after that, Slade had this vendetta against the Titans, but since the Titans were already uh, fallen apart by then, he swore that if the Titans ever came back, he would come back as well. But as we saw in the season 2 premiere, he was in hiding, or at least in retirement. He wasn't Deathstroke anymore since uh, since then, since Jericho's death, and it was only Jason saying the Titans are back that led him to coming back as well to exact his revenge against the Titans, and I guess fulfill his promise Dick, which is definitely very similar to a previous Deathstroke storyline we saw on Arrow with The Promise, but still, that is what we saw, which doesn't make sense with the timeline we're seeing here, where three years ago, he wasn't in hiding, this is two years after Jericho's death, he wasn't in hiding, he wasn't in retirement, and he always still had a vendetta against the Titans, even though the Titans were completely, completely separate and completely apart, and it wasn't until a couple months ago where they came back together, well, uh, you know, at least for what Slade knows, so for this timeline it doesn't really make much sense and i'm hoping they they explain that as since like in between when rose met slade and when slade brought her in and trained her there was a gap there where slade decided that since the titans were not together anymore he would quit and retire but then when the titans came back a couple months ago he came back and that's when he brought rose back as well because as of right now the timeline doesn't make sense so, while the timeline for now doesn't really make much sense, it definitely is a pretty good uh, storyline. The flashbacks are great. I really like seeing Rose's origin story and her relationship for with Slade that she had during that time. But with all that, they, I think it's the reaction to the, to the storyline, to the flashbacks, that take the cake for not only the best moment of the storyline, but most likely the best moment of the episode. As Jason, after all these episodes of everyone treating him very badly, a lot of bad things happen to him, and then he's even suicidal... A couple episodes ago, he definitely seemed a lot more happy now, and then for him to be told that that was essentially fake, or at least he thinks that was all fake, it definitely is a very, very understandable reaction, and Curran Walters knocks it out of the park in this moment. It's, again, his best moment of acting. He's probably the best actor on this show in terms of the actual moments, in terms of what we've seen so far, and this is a genuinely really well-acted, really emotional moment that makes me even more excited for a possible Red Hood TV show, or even a Red Hood movie with uh, Kern Walters, or not maybe not a movie, but that actual storyline with Batman and Joker, because that moment where, J where Jason in the movie or the comic book brings in Joker and asks Batman why he never killed Joker, that moment is incredibly emotional, and it's a moment I think Kern Walters can very much pull off, with also Ian Glenn as Batman, whoever plays Joker in this universe, if Joker ever does appear, but with all that in mind, this moment really proves how great an actor Kern Walters is, and really proves 
proves that they, he, he definitely 100% deserves his own TV show as the Red Hood, but either way, this was a very emotional, very good moment that was probably the best moment of this episode. So finally, there's the Dick Grayson storyline. So this is like in between, like there's the prison storyline, which was a lot shorter than like Arrow's prison storyline, but it was like around the same amount of episodes as Flash's prison storyline. Anyway, between the prison storyline and the end of that, where he realizes what he needs to do, and then when he actually does that and becomes Nightwing, there's this episode, which is in the middle, where he's already escaped prison, and he goes to get the costume and sets out to try to get Jericho back from Slade, but I do think the moment where he talks to Adeline is a good moment, but it's certainly everything we see after that in Dick's storyline that is really good and really enjoyable. Dick goes to the costume maker, which apparently in this universe, there's this one guy, actually a whole operation, who makes all the superhero costumes, or at least the Bat Family costumes, which I think is so cool, because one thing that really doesn't make much sense about really any superhero is where they get their costumes, because they don't really have any costume designers on hand, and I know in for Batman, they say Alfred makes the costume sometimes, but I just don't believe that. It's not in his expertise, so I'm really, really happy that they have this thing in universe, this whole operation that makes superhero costumes, or at least the Bat Family costumes, and I'm assuming they also made costumes like for Hawk and Dove and Wonder Girl, and maybe a whole bunch of Titans and Justice League members' costumes, but at least for Batman, Robin, and Nightwing, they're making their costumes, and I really like that, not to mention that the interaction actions here between Dick and the costume maker, Stu, and all the other people working for him, how they're all really salty and really, really mad that uh, Dick burned their suit, the Robin suit. It's really, really funny, and it's genuinely enjoyable, and the once Stu actually shows Dick the Nightwing suit, which we don't see in this episode, but we do in the next episode, it's just a great ending to this storyline and a great setup for the next episode, which is an episode based off this storyline, based off a couple different storylines. I'm really excited for. So in conclusion, I thought this episode was definitely a really good penultimate episode to the season because of the Dick storyline, which is really enjoyable, the Rose Jason storyline, which was a great flashback, even though the timeline was a little bit wonky with it. It was a great flashback, part of the episode, and Jason's reaction was really emotional. And while the other storylines with Hawk and Rachel and uh, and Cordy and Cadmus weren't exactly great, they were there and they weren't bad either. So uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty good episode and I'll give it an 8.9 out of 10. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and thanks for watching.